I just killed the patient and the lawyer is coming. <laughs> endobronchial ultrasound here. Endobronchial ultrasound. Okay. So there are two parts you need to learn. One is the, the scope itself and one is the needle. The needle is actually the most complicated part. And as they stressed during the talk before, you cannot hurt the patient with this. It's very difficult to hurt the patient, but it's easy to hurt the scope. And the scope of the U.S. is $85,000. A repair, a single repair, is between three and seven thousand U.S. dollars. So just one needle puncture in the wrong way will be very expensive for your hospital. So I think that's the concern about the procedure. Don't worry about the patient. The patient will be fine, and you cannot injure them. But the scopes, be careful. So you need to learn the anatomy of the scope a bit. So this is the ultrasound transducer here, right here at the end. There you see the video camera with the light coming out here. Okay. And the needle comes out right next to the video to the video camera here. The video camera images at 30 degrees. So we don't have the video image here, but and we can if you'd like, but we have the um, the ultrasound image up here. Let me just freeze this for a second. So the most difficult part about doing the EBUS procedure is that you're used to a zero degree angle as you do your intubation. With EBUS, you have a 30 degree angle. So as, if you wanted to do an intubation, if this was the vocal cords, and I want to go through like this, what you'd be doing if you saw your video would be that you'd be hitting the arytenoid cartilages and you wouldn't be able to get in, you'd get very frustrated. So what I tell my trainees is that if this is the epiglottis, you want to visualize the epiglottis and just go underneath the epiglottis. Have the patient take a deep breath, and then almost by feel, you go right into the airway. Don't visualize the cords, because you'll be too low. Again, if you're looking up 30 degrees, and you see the cords, you're really facing the arytenoid cartilages. So in a patient who's not intubated, that's the most challenging part, which is to get in. And then in navigation of the airways, as you look inside the airways with the video, remember that you are also at 30 degrees. So I don't have the uh, video up, but if I want to look down the right side, what I do is I go down the left, you can see my, my light here, and then as I'm looking down the left, I put my thumb up and I back myself down on the right side and then turn myself anteriorly. So you have to navigate around the airways differently because your field of view is very different. That's easy to pick up. The second thing that's hard to pick up is the actual ultrasound image. So we're used to seeing axial cuts on a CT scan, we're used to seeing endobronchial images, but we're not used to think about anatomy from the inside out. And that's the challenging part of EBUS is you have to relearn thoracic anatomy because you're learning everything from the airway outside. Now, when the EBUS gives you a field of view, that field of view is 50 degrees and you can then rotate that field of view. When you look here, this is your airway wall, and this is looking anteriorly, away from the ultrasound. It depends which way you're, you're facing. If I'm facing perpendicular to the airway, then this is anterior. If I'm facing lateral, then I'm facing lateral. This is the angle here at 45 degrees that the needle comes out. So the first thing you're going to do when you look inside here is try to identify a lymph node. But if you identify a lymph node and your field of view and it's here, you will not be able to biopsy it. So I'm going to ask you to find a lymph node and then position the lymph node so that you can then take a biopsy. When you use the EBUS, and I use my scope backwards. I'm a right-handed bronchoscopist, but you should not. You should be a left-handed, but never mind. When you do bronchoscopy, the movement should be not here. It's in the wrist. And the movement should be a rotation like this. So when I ask you to find the lymph node, it's going to be movement like this very slowly. Imagine you're sweeping with your ultrasound to see. Then the other movement would be, with the other hand if you want, a back and forth. So I'm sweeping constantly and then adjusting forward and back and forward and back. So what I'm doing is giving myself an ultrasound image of the entire length of the airway. So that's the, that's the ultrasound. Now the needle is the important component because 
most of what you're doing is biopsying. If you're looking for pulmonary emboli, you don't need a needle. Right. You don't want a needle. But if you're biopsying anything, a mass, a lymph node, a cyst, um, you need to have a needle. Uh, the needle has several parts, but the parts that you need to know are the stylet. This is the actual body of the needle that lets you move the needle up and down. This is the guard here. This is sort of the safety, I call, that keeps you from going too deep into the airway. This is the sheath that protects the needle, and this is the lock that locks the needle onto the EBUS scope. The most important thing is to have a a, re a method by which you move everything because you don't want to put the needle through the scope in a fashion where the scope is bent because then you'll puncture the scope or you don't want to put the needle out inside the scope because you'll puncture the scope. So very important to take it very slowly and put the needle out in such a fashion that you're not going to cause damage to the bronchoscope. That sequence is the following. So I'm going to put my needle in to here and I'll show you how to do this and I'm going to lock it on here and then I'm going to put my sheath down just enough so that on the video I can see my sheath coming out a little bit. Then I let my guard down like this. Then I'm going to pull my sheath, my, my silet back just a little bit. Then I'm going to position myself in the patient so that I can make a puncture. As I make a puncture, as my needle comes out here. So then I take my stylet and I do a jiggle. That jiggle displaces any bronchial epithelium that's in the end of my needle out of the needle so that when I put my suction on, I'm not going to capture bronchial epithelium. And then the needle goes on the end. It's preloaded so that it's already ready for suction. And now, the first thing I do here is to turn the suction on. I hold two fingers on here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the needle back and forth inside the lymph node, back and forth, back and forth. When I've done a sufficient number of passes, at least five, then I stop, suction off. When you're done, suction off, needle up till you hear a click, guard up, lock, Sheath up, lock, unlock this. Yeah. So, so I will show you. Yeah. On the way down, first thing that I do, so I, I have the stylet in. Imagine I have the stylet in. So the first thing is sheath, so lock, sheath down, guard down, then needle out. On the way back, suction off, needle up, guard up, sheath up up, unlock. So on the way down, it's down, down, down. On the way out, up, up, up. Very simple. When I'm training my fellows, I make them say what they're doing. Sheath down, guard down, needle out, suction on, so I know that they're thinking about every step that they're doing. So I'm going to load the stylet, take the scope, and see if you can find the needle, or the node, I'm sorry. Into here. Yes. Now, I'm going to just turn the. This is the freeze button. I'm not, I don't know where. Doesn't matter, it's just straight. There's a, there's a node here and two nodes on this side. So choose one on the left. See, oh, there's good. Here. Yes. Now, this is a node? This is a simulated lymph node. This is one centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters. So here is about and a centimeter and a half. What is that? So another node or mass. Uh, this is a bigger one. It is a bigger one. Now, here is the point at which your needle comes out of the scope. 45 degree angle for the needle to come out. So you want to position the mass or the node, not just so you can see it, but so you can biopsy it. The, no the nodes or the masses will be very heterogeneous. So what I do here first is that before I do a biopsy, I survey all the lymph nodes in all the stations. So I know what they look like. I know where I want to biopsy. I know where the primary lesion is. So if it's a right up and low mass and I see a large lymph node on the left side, I'm not going to start on the right 
right side. I will start in the left because this would be an M3 lymph node. You start here. Okay, and that could be if you have cytology, you biopsy, you're done. This is it. That's it. That's all you need to do. So you're perfectly positioned right now to biopsy. But what I want to do is just take your wrist and get a sense. Some lymph nodes are spherical, some are ovoid. So you want to get a sense of what is the structure of the node. Okay. So, very good. Let's give someone else a chance to see if they can find the lymph node. And then we'll try to do a biopsy.